Yes, we have two questions in the back, and I think those, and then we've got, I think I see a question here, and those will be our last three. Okay. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I was hoping we could circle back to your comments about K through 12 interventions. I was a longtime teacher and school leader in Detroit and saw on pretty intimately numerous occasions the ways in which um, the entanglement of the education and criminal justice system and the ways that that had um, you know, pretty life-altering implications for many of my students. And so um, as someone who's interested in working in that policy arena in the future, I was wondering if you could talk about what reforms you think would be most impactful in subverting those injustices and racial inequities and like, would you focus those within the education system, criminal justice system, a combination or elsewhere? I think it should be a combination, but acknowledging that if you did some things in K through 12, you wouldn't have to deal with it in a criminal context. You know, one time someone asked me if I could change anything about the criminal justice system, like if I had like a magic wand kind of thing. Um, and I told them, Honestly, I, it's not even changing prisons or sentencing laws or anything like that. You know what I would do? I would give kids parents that, that loved them and that encouraged them to do the right thing and did not encourage them or um, praise them solely for sports or um, encourage them to be a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. um, things like that because when you're in that courtroom I promise you you see parents that do that um, and then if it's, it's happening at home sometimes if someone's lucky um, they might come across a teacher or a coach though that can that change that way of thinking or mm -hmm. show them something different um, and so you know I I know this is tricky but again in our k through 12 education we have to talk about uncomfortable facts mm -hmm. um, and we have to talk about consequences and there's lots of areas that mm -hmm. you can do that you know you can even talk about consequences in the context of history mm -hmm. um, because what I found even was a lot of people in the criminal system that had never been held to any type of consequence. Mm -hmm. So when I say that um, mom or dad had already always fixed things for them, and then um, they might have just gotten passed through um, an education system, you know, even though they had low test scores or didn't do school or whatever. So they're still not even seeing consequences at school. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So like when I say K through 12 education, I'm not necessarily saying improve math courses, mm -hmm. um, but well, I, I guess I am a little bit because you know when you have a good education system that shows people career options mm -hmm. versus the only way I can get out of my situation is to be a basketball player or a rapper, mm -hmm. um, it can change their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've even had an experience where um, there was a program through the John Glenn School of Public Affairs that brought a lot of college age women and I would host them at my court and have all the women judges come talk to them. And one of my um, friends, her name's Kim Brown, she's from like Eastern Ohio, a more rural area. And one of those women stood up and, and said, thank you Judge Brown for being here because although I have made it into a master's program, I have never seen a woman judge from my area. Hmm. And so just seeing, just mm -hmm. seeing her and hearing what she had to say mm -hmm. made an impact in that woman's life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 